Hey guys, it's Lucas D. Uh, welcome to my Triple Blade 4 Totems video. This is an updated build video. Uh, I did do a previous video on Triple Blade 4 Totems and I just wanted to share with you guys where it was at when I was at level 83. Now, I'm playing this in the Softcore League, so it is a fun build to play. You do cast three totems at once, of course, so the, the damage is going to be pretty crazy and it's very fun. And we do use Whirling Blades, which is linked with Fortify, Faster Attacks, and Blood Magic. We also have a five link Soul Mantle here. So, what that's currently linked with, if you've only got a four link, I do recommend Added Fire Damage, Concentrate Effect, and Faster Casting. That linked with Blade 4 is pretty good for a four link on its own. And if you've got a five link like I do, uh, in a blue socket you can put in there added lightning damage or you can put in uh, added chaos damage if you like. You can also use physical or lightning. I do find added lightning to be better than physical or lightning. If you've got an extra red socket instead of the blue, you can chuck in there maybe iron will or you can also use blood magic and cast your totems from your life. Now if you want to cast your totems from your life and use blood magic, you can still use the auras. Um, the auras we're using are Herald of Ash and Enfeeble, and you can also use the Hatred Aura, which is over here. The only thing is, when you're using the Hatred Aura, if we go to the skill tree, you'll need to pick up the reduced mana reserve nodes. So, at least 10% reduced mana reserve should give you about enough room space for you to have enough Hatred, Herald of Ash, and Enfeeble. Okay guys, so um, I'll explain how the triple blade four totems work. So when you cast a totem, we've got our three triple blade totems up now. And the only issue we have is when the totems die or we recast them, we'll get another debuff or a curse will get on us. And um, that's what happens. As you can see on the top of my head, I'm constantly getting a level 20 curse, which is inflicts a random level 20 curse when your totems die. Now to counter that of course we just use our flasks and our flasks do a pretty good job of getting rid of the curses and it makes us immune to the curses while the flask is in effect and we have that with our quicksilver flask and our mana flask. If you're using blood magic you can just use two granite flasks here that give you additional armor and just have the remove curses uh, prefix on on there as well which is pretty cool also. But let's now take a look at the passive skill tree. So in the passive skill tree we start off in the shadow area and we pick up mostly the physical nodes, the life nodes and the cast speed nodes. We then move up towards the skill tree and we will pick up some more life nodes, critical strike nodes and also physical nodes on the top with a little bit of extra chaos damage on the top at the end. And then we will move our way towards the witch area. When we're in the witch area, we'll pick up more area nodes, which are there, and also area nodes in the Templar area. We also pick up Ancestral Bond, which is located in the far left of the Templar area. Now when playing this build, you can also start in the witch area, and you can take the increased spell damage nodes and cast speed nodes there, which is also great. You can also start this build in the Templar area, and you can work your way up there if you want to get the jewel totems as quick as possible which is pretty cool also. Okay guys so this is a bit of gameplay footage from Dark Forest map which is a level 75 map and basically what we're doing is we're just casting our totems up so casting our three totems up and we're just running by or the mobs while we just let our blade totems do the work, our blade four totems do the work and the clear speed's pretty good Another way we use the build is we use our whirling blades and we just whirl through the enemies while we get our fortify up and we just cast our totem. So as we whirl, cast our totem, whirl, cast our totem, and then we just keep moving through and casting our totem. So whirling blades, cast totem, mana flask. So we always keep our curses off us. So whirling blades, curse, cast the totem, and then mana flask. That's basically the process, and then you just go through the map as quick as you possibly can. And now we're on the map boss, so the map boss for this area is just a little bit of a harder version of Oak, but he's relatively easy, he doesn't do too much DPS. The only thing is he does cast Immortal Core, 
which does make him immune to our physical damage. But relatively, the boss does go down pretty quick in this map, and he is an easy boss to counter. With other maps also, I haven't had too much dramas with the bosses and that, and it's a very good build to use when taking out bosses. Well guys, I'm Lucas D. I hope you enjoyed the video. And this is just a Triple Totems build update. And if you guys want to use Triple Blade 4 Totems, this is just a guide, If you just a couple of suggestions you could try when doing the Triple Blade 4 Totems build. I hope the video has been a bit of help for you guys. And once again, thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe or leave a like. Much appreciated if you do that. And I'll try and be out with more build videos in the future. Thanks and see you later.